what are we doing? <laughs> Who's a wizard? Who's coming from outer space? Which I think was another great challenge. Yeah. It certainly wasn't a challenge to get the conversation going between Robert Downey Jr. and Mark Ruffalo as they reassembled for Variety's Actors on Actors series. I love the series, but sometimes the two actors can get a little too, you know, you're great, no, you're great. And Mark Ruffalo definitely went there too much. <laughs> we don't have to go down this road, but you, you... Let's go down it. And to be clear, Robert Downey Jr. was fantastic as Tony Stark. Is it better to be feared or respected? Brought an offbeat energy, a surprising energy to the first Iron Man film. It's an iconic performance. The film's a lot of fun. And yeah, he was the starting point for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. But Mark, let's keep things in perspective here, okay? To see this great um, character indie actor take that step into a studio world, which was totally different back then than it is now. And you, you and I know what that is. It was such a different world. I honestly don't know what he means by that. Like, yeah, like Marvel was just starting out as a real like movie studio. But I mean, he says the, the whole studio world, the whole world. Like, I mean, huh? I mean, Marvel had already done like four X-Men movies, three Blade movies, the Spider-Man trilogy. And then, yeah, there's also like the Matrix trilogy, the Star Wars prequels. What are you talking about, Mark? They didn't really cast people like, like us. Incredibly tone deaf, like especially when he sees all the diversity now happening at Marvel. I mean, the only reason Marvel was hesitant to cast Robert Downey Jr. was not because of his acting abilities, it was because of his criminal past and their inability to insure him. You people are so petty and tiny. I know his ass is in reference to them being less jacked, typical action movie stars, but I mean, Tony was a scientist who put on a suit of armor and Mark played a scientist who transformed into a CGI created character. We already had Michael Keaton as Batman and Tobey Maguire as Spider-Man, even Keanu Reeves in The Matrix. A month after Iron Man came out, Edward Norton played Bruce Banner in The Incredible Hulk. And to elevate sort of this character work within that big tentpole system. Sandra Bullock in Speed, Jack Nicholson in The Joker, Catherine Jeter Jones in The Massive Zorro, Liam Neeson and Hugh McGregor and Ian McKellen, Michelle Pfeiffer in Batman Returns. Now that's a ballsy performance. Just to see you transform that whole concept of what a studio picture was. Do I really have to address that? And I don't think any performance single-handedly has changed the Hollywood studio system, but if there's one that comes close, is absolutely. I'm Captain Jack Sparrow, savvy. Like that's a performance that just like was ballsy and Disney didn't know what the hell he's doing. <laughs> he just went for it. Captain Jack Sparrow became a household name because of Johnny Depp. Now thank goodness. <laughs> Robert responds very humbly and appropriately. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, oh, please, dude. I mean, who? I, I don't know who thanks who. Because, yeah, he has people think that came before him. Here's some Ford in Star Wars. Two months after the first Iron Man comes out, The Dark Knight comes out. Like, Heath Ledger goes on to win an Oscar. It was nominated in eight categories in total. Robert Downey Jr. is being credited with so much. I mean, he just, he gave a good performance, a really good performance in, yeah, a pretty good movie. But, I mean, he doesn't get credit for the, whatever it is, like 30 movies that came after it. No, that's Marvel. <laughs> Marvel changed the Hollywood system in terms of, yeah, they didn't just do, you know, sequels and stuff like that. This was like a planned out whole phases of film. Like, so it was almost like TV episodes in the movie theater. Like Marvel was the one who changed cinema. Yeah, just because Robert Downey Jr. was in the first movie doesn't mean he gets credit for all things that came after. So I don't want this to come across as like I'm hating on Robert Downey Jr.'s performance. It's a great performance. I'm just counteracting Mark Ruffalo is just way over the top, way overreaching praise of Robert's performance. I mean, it's a really good performance, but I mean, Come on, let's keep things in check, don't you think? 